Right, question nine. Ralph has got some data for us on his swimming times. And you can see those here. And um, we're asked to calculate a mean, or rather an estimate of the mean for these data. So uh, I know there's 50, and if I add those up, I would imagine they come to 50 as well. They do. Uh, looking here, though, I've got grouped data. Well, this is why it has to be an estimate of the mean, because although he's somewhere between 14 and 14 and a half minutes, I don't know exactly where. So in order to deal with this, I have to use the midpoint. The midpoint is my assumption that, that the times are evenly distributed within there, so I can just calculate using the midpoint. And if I want to find the midpoint, 14.5, uh, add 14 and then half it gives me 14.25 and I can continue doing that for the rest of these and calculating those. Um, do check if you've got even class widths these will go up in even steps but if the class widths vary then so will the steps going up between the midpoints. Um, you can save some time if it's got an even class width, but you can also get some incorrect values if you assume that there's a constant class width and it in fact isn't constant and varies. So just check that, uh, or you can work them all out, or you can perhaps do it in your head if you give the decimals, whichever you prefer. Now that I've got the midpoints, if I was going to work this out manually, I would multiply each of these midpoints by the frequency. So 14.25 times by two is gonna give me 28.5. Midpoint times frequency, 28.5. And I would do that for each of these. And then I would add those up and I would divide by 50. But for two marks, that's an awful lot of work. And also we've got one of these. As you can see, I have entered the midpoints, 14.25, 14.75, all the way down to 16.75, along with the corresponding frequencies, eight, there, 16, 12, seven, five, two, and if you scroll up, you can see I've got those there. Now, I got to this by, in the menu, going to, um, the table and selecting one variable. Okay, in, 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 the, in the menu, I chose table and selected one variable. And then I entered the data. If you haven't got a frequency column, you need to do that in the setup. Uh, I will do a little video, a brief one, just showing you how to get the, the table in, uh, uh, in, in a moment as an extra video. So if you don't know that, we'll pause this one and watch that one and then come back. Okay, but once I've got those data entered, if I hit option, and if I hit one variable calculations, three, the first thing it gives me is that X bar, that's the mean, is 15.84. Done, two marks, okay, moving on. Explain how you can check if your answer is sensible. Well, how can I check if it's sensible? Let's have a look. Sometimes he swam it in 14 and a bit minutes. Sometimes he did it in 16 and a bit minutes and somewhere in between. If my answer was 20 minutes, is that even possible considering it's more than the highest? Even more clearly, we can see that most of his times are sort of somewhere around about here. Generally speaking, the middle, 15.84, that's like 15, 16, it's kind of in the middle, isn't it? the values in the middle of the range of data. Now, over the page, we've got 
another question which is calculate an estimate of the standard deviation of the times for the 50 swims. No, 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 we don't want to do any extra maths. What we've got here is the, uh, the calculations on our screen. So if you have a little look here, you've got there 0.675. Now, we've also got here 0.68. Well, do you know what? Either one's allowed. This is, uh, is it a sample? Is it a population? That will be the only difference. At this point, if you take either of those, that's fine. So that will be the standard deviation of x. And this is the uh, standard deviation of x as well. You might recognize those two. The difference is to do with samples versus populations, but we're not going to get into that because either is acceptable in this one here. Okay, so, so we'll take the value. And what was it? 0 0.68, it comes out 2dp. 0.68, job done, moving on. Okay. It doesn't say you must show you're working. It basically wants you to do the calculator. There's no way you're about to do it uh, like manually without the calculator or without the table function in the three minutes that these two marks would allow. And down here, we've got the last part of this question. Um, which is 9D. A swimming coach helps with Ralph's training for six weeks. Here is some information about his 800 meter training swims after the coaching. Okay, compare the performance before and after the coaching. Show working to support your answer. Um, that working bit kind of threw me initially because, well, what working do you need to do to show that 14.2 is less than 15.8? Um, I mean, 14.2 is less than 15.8, uh, or 15.84 if you want. Um, his mean is lower. Therefore, his swim times are generally faster. Okay, and then we can also say the standard deviation Uh, 0.53 is also less than 0.68. I mean, do I need a calculation to show that? I, I mean, I, I, I guess I could subtract them and find the difference, but the key thing is that it's lower um, rather than what the difference is. I mean, it's, I mean, is it significantly lower? Well, I mean, that's a whole different branch of maths, but it's lower nonetheless. Um, so uh, here's standard deviation is also lower, therefore his swims are more consistent. Now, The only calculation I think we could add into this is how much faster. So let's do 15.84 minus 14.2, and that's going to give us what? 1.64. Uh, 1.64 minutes. 1.64 minutes faster. We could change that into seconds, but since he didn't for his table, I don't think we will either. 1.64 minutes faster, job done.